Hello friends, Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to share with you something that I'm going to be using in an upcoming project and it's kind of important for the way that I do things and it's kind of important for people who don't like noticeable gaps and things that show. I hate this right here. This drives me batty. This big chain three thing when you're using double crochets and have to turn and chain three and continue. Oh my goodness. I do not like it. It is so obvious and it's so not cute. And I know more than one person who has said, I just don't use double crochets anymore. I don't use anything where I have to work into a chain because it looks like this. I don't like it. I have three ways to fix that. This is the most important one right here because you see how perfect this is? This is the most important one. I'm going to be showing you this in just a minute because this is very, very important for a really cool bag that I have coming up very shortly. So first, I will just remind everyone how a lot of people learn how to double crochet. Finish this row and it's time to turn. Chain three. Turn your work. Skip this very first stitch and then you move over to this one with your double crochet. And then you continue down the line with whatever your pattern was. Mm -hmm. We're continuing along and here I am at my very last real stitch. There's my double crochet and now I have to work into the chain. I do not like working into the chain because often this top chain that you need disappears, it gets really tight. Sometimes it's easy to forget, especially for beginners. It's really easy to miss this and you find out that, oh, 14 rows back, I lost a stitch. So what we do here, we have to go into this chain, find the proper part of your chain, and then do your double crochet. And then you have this great big thing. I don't like it. So there's another way to do it. Instead of a chain three, you can do this one, which is a chain two. Still noticeable, but not as bad. So it's exactly the same thing. It was just a chain two. Instead of three, turn your work, skip the very first stitch and then continue down your row. And now here's my last real stitch with my double crochet. I still have to work into a chain, even with the chain two. So now I have to find the top chain, which always gets tiny, just because of being worked at the beginning. So now there's my double crochet. I don't like either of those versions because they slow me down. They slow me down. And I think I'm pretty fast, but when I have to go to a chain, mm -mm. So those two are typical ways that people do their double crochets when they have to turn and start a new row on a flat piece. These two ways are the way that I do them. You've seen me do this a hundred times. So you can see not a very noticeable gap at all because there isn't one. What we're going to do is just chain one and turn our work. And in that very same stitch where we just chained the closest one, instead of skipping it, we're going to work a real double crochet into it. And work all the way down again. And you see when we get to the end, I have a real stitch to work into. Right there. That's a real stitch right here. Instead of finding the right chain, there's my stitch all the way across. Real stitches. I love that. I do not like working into the chain, so that's the way that I quite often do it. Probably most of the time that you've seen me do anything on camera here on my videos, but this is the most important way. We will be working on this for a really cool bag that I have coming up shortly, but you see how perfect these edges are? Instead of this mess over here, I don't like at all, because they don't match. This is nice and straight and it is super easy. It is called a stacked single crochet. So I'm going to take out one stitch from my previous row here so that I can show you exactly what we need to do. It is so easy. You're going to go, oh, how come didn't anybody ever teach me this when I was learning? You're right. This is the way that everybody should learn how to do it. So there's my last stitch right here. I'm going to do a double crochet just like normal. And now I just finished my row. It's time to work the next row. 
So I'm going to turn my work, but do not chain. That's important. No chaining. We're just going to go right back into the same stitch, the very first stitch, and do a single crochet. Pull through, single crochet, and now you see these right here. There's our stitches that we just made into our single crochet. We go into the closest one with a single crochet. No chaining. We're just going to turn and get this first stitch right here. Do a single crochet. So yarn over, pull through, and single crochet. And now we want to take those vertical bars, go for the front one. That's my favorite one to use, right there. So now I'm in the front bar. I'm going to yarn over and do another single crochet. Now I have a stacked single crochet. I'm going to show you that one more time because this is super important for actually for a couple of couple of patterns that I have coming up. A couple of projects that you're going to love. I'm trying to make everything as easy as possible. Remember that I'm always trying to make things easy for everybody and this is going to make your bag look really nice, have professional straight edges and be a lot easier than working in all those silly chains. So again, we just finished. We're going to turn our work and this very first stitch right here is where we want to work. We want to get in that stitch, yarn over, pull through, and single crochet. And now we have those two vertical bars right there from our single crochet that we just made. And we want to go under the first vertical bar, the one that is furthest away from your hook. Go under there, yarn over, pull through, and single crochet again. See how easy that is. Now we're going to work all the way down with our normal double crochets. And here's my last one. Typically this would be my last stitch, but no! Look! I have a real stitch right here. Right here is a real stitch instead of having to figure out which chain I was on. So we're going to yarn over, pull through, pull through two, and pull through two again. And we have lovely edges! and they look so pretty. So we're going to do this one more time. Turn our work. Do not chain. It's important to not chain. Go through our very first closest stitch we possibly can. Do a single crochet and when that single crochet is done then you want to go underneath the front vertical bar and do another single crochet. Now you have two single crochets stacked on top of each other and it looks like a double crochet. and we just continue our work. It makes really nice edges. If you are planning on making like a giant blanket and you don't want to put a border on it or a bag that I'll be making and you want edges to look nice so when you join everything it looks right. See now here's my last one and there's a real stitch. I am so excited. I love this technique. Right there. Boom. Real stitch. Didn't have to fight with any chains. And you can see the difference here. We've got everything lined up here. This ends up being a little bit bigger because there's so much slack in these, in this chain three thing. The chain two is not quite so bad, but it's still noticeable. And then this is the way that you probably have seen me do a, a thousand times. I was just using different shades of Karen Simply Soft and my five millimeter prim. All of these were done with the exact same hook and you can tell they all look a little bit different and it's just because of our turn chain. That was it. If you do want to put a border on it, it makes it even easier because you don't have this big lumpy thing. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimble Hooks and stop back soon. Thanks. Bye.